psychology of misdirection. Which hand? Which hand? This one? What? The science of magic is the science of psychology. The optical illusion. Make sure that you have a firm footing, otherwise you might just want to tip over sideways. And the manipulation of geometry. If you turn the body sideways, now the body is taking up a lot less space. Principles that can all come together in the physical construction of elaborate technical props. Magicians closely guard their secrets. They will never tell you how a trick works, but they can tell us why their tricks work. Science. And if you know how and where to look, those principles represent the real wonder, the real tradition, the real science of magic. Well now, how did I do that? Magic. But what exactly is magic? Well, basically it's me, the magician, fooling you, the audience. That's true for every magician. But how they choose to fool you, well, that makes a difference between a cool party trick and selling out a Vegas showroom. It's not about uh, the tricks. It's not about the illusions. It's not about the technique. It's not about the magician's costume or his hair or the music or the lights. The most important thing is communication. Magic is a theatrical art form, and in all theatrical art forms, you need that communication with the audience to make it successful. Whether we're watching a high-tech act, such as Chris Angel's Metamorphosis, or a simple parlor trick, the real magic happens in our minds and our emotions. So, if you're looking for the truth behind a magical illusion, and it's not in what you're seeing, maybe it's in what you're not seeing. Which brings us to our first principle of magic, the psychology of misdirection. According to Webster's Dictionary, misdirection is the act of directing wrongly. Okay, now watch. You roll the other one up like this for me, okay? Chris Angel is equally at home on the street as he is on stage, because the scientific principles of magic are the same. This one? You're smart. For our benefit, Chris is letting us get a close-up look at his sleight of hand. Let's try it again, okay? <laughs> Did you catch the misdirection in that one? Which hand? This one? We'll show it to you again. Which hand did you see it going? Watch how Chris misdirects the woman and then throws the ball of tissue over her head. <laughs> She's right. Let's try it again, okay? <laughs> Seems easy, doesn't it? You can trick people if they're willing to be tricked. That's where the psychology comes in. When I'm creating an illusion, I'm showing you something, but I'm already two or three steps ahead of you. So therefore, when the final aspect of the illusion happens, you're impressed by it. You didn't see what happened. You didn't know it was coming. <laughs> Did you catch the misdirection that time? Let's play it again. Now watch closely because it happens fast. You may have seen what happened, but obviously she didn't. You, you hold on to the Pepsi, I'll hold on to the apple here now. Okay, watch, blow, go. Gone. Manipulating her mind is far greater, I believe, than necessarily any tricks that you can buy at a magic shop. Take the fork with my bare hands, there's no sleep. Because when you're able to manipulate somebody's mind, you can create pure magic from the simplest of objects. You see it going? Watch a prong. It's Chris Angel right. has prepared his audience to expect magic to bend the fork in his hand. You see that? Look, look, look. Does Chris possess the psychic power of mind over matter? Or is his technique of misdirection so masterful that we don't see how he bends the fork? The essence of the secret lies in the power of the mind rather than in the illusion because in reality, everybody loves to be fooled. Everybody loves to see the impossible be possible. This time you're gonna roll this one up, okay? Now, what was your name again? I'm sorry. Janine. Janine. Hi, Janine. What I want you to do is roll that up into a ball like this for me. Okay, perfect. Now you're gonna take that one, give it to me. I made sure you how to make something dematerialize. Now we're gonna actually show you how to make something materialize. Watch, I'll show you what I mean, watch. 
He watched. If I roll these two balls together, there were two, correct? Right, two. Watch. The same principle of misdirection that Chris Angel used to make a mouse materialize, Lance Burton will present to us step by step. Now watch closely. This is a very simple trick. Uh, this is called the torn and restored uh, napkin, or the torn and restored Kleenex. It's a classic of magic, and you've all probably seen it. The magician takes a Kleenex, tears it up in little pieces, and then sprinkles magic dust on it, and, and it's restored back into one piece. Now, uh, of course, science won't let you do that because you can't put the molecules back together. So we as magicians have to cheat. We use two napkins. Uh, first, what you have to do is you have to do uh, your uh, presets. This is what you do before uh, you come out in front of your audience. One of the napkins, this is the secret napkin. The audience is never aware of this napkin. Uh, you roll it up into a small ball and what you're going to do with this is you're going to palm the napkin. Palming is a is a uh, something we do in magic. It's a technique. You press it in your palm, you hold your hand in a natural position uh, and the audience is never aware of this. Now. Uh, you come out in front of your audience and you tell them what you're going to do. You're going to tear and restore the napkin. Remember, you've got the secret one palmed here. You tear the napkin up into strips, in the little pieces, and now what you're going to do is you're going to roll those torn pieces into a small ball, uh, and you want that to resemble, as close as possible, the one you have palmed in your hand, okay? So, because you're going to switch those in just a moment. So place the torn pieces uh, on top, the whole pieces below. Now you can reach in your pocket for the magic dust. And as you're doing that, that's your misdirection. All you do is you switch the two pieces. So now you have the whole pieces on top, the torn pieces below. Come out and pretend to sprinkle the magic dust uh, on the napkin. Blow on it, restore the napkin, and everyone is amazed. Now, uh, when you perform this, uh, just remember, don't let them see the extra pieces at the beginning or at the end. If you, even if they see them at the end, they'll suspect that you have two napkins and, uh, and it sort of ruins the trick. Uh, if, you, if you do get caught with the extra pieces, the best thing to do is to blow on them and restore those pieces uh, back home.